Oh, hey, hello. I'm sorry, I did not see you there. Welcome to another uh, episode of uh, Admiral Vortex, or Robbie's uh, series, called, or was it, Nights in Harlem, where we play magic, I think. Um, as you can probably tell, this is not Robbie. This is Alex. I'm, uh, I'm trying out uh, coverage for uh, this one time. Robbie... Uh, uh, covering two formats a week or eight matches, that's quite a lot, so I thought I'd uh, help out a bit and try my hand at some legacy coverage. I never play legacy, well, so I sometimes play legacy, but I'll try my best. Um, as you can see, well, I've tried to copy this layout as best as I could. It's not quite the same, but I'll, uh, we'll, we'll make do, we'll, uh, we'll see uh, what happens. Um, did our players just run away? They're scared? No, they're back. Here they are. We've got Roald on the left playing Elves uh, and Bastijn on the right playing Death and Texas. Um, yeah, let's see uh, what they do. We've got a uh, mulligan from Bastijn going down 2-6. Um, and Roald starting off with a Green Sun Zenith for 0. What can he find? Well, he can find a Dried Arbor Elf. Elves plays two of those, I think, in general. Um, let me see. I, this is all a bit new to me. Um, let's see if I can actually adjust the life total if I have to. Let's find out. Yes, I can. Of course, they're still at 20, but... Um, yeah, this matchup. Uh, we see a turn one uh, Mother of Runes from the Stein side. And probably not the best in this matchup uh, because of the combo potential of elves just going um, over you and one mother does not do a lot against that. I think probably the best card in the Death and Text deck uh, is probably Umusaurus Jitte, a card that, that can single-handedly just shut down elves um, by killing everything basically. Um, what elves can do though is of course block and bounce either an arbor or an elf to prevent the uh, Jitter from going loose, but uh, we'll see if that happens. Here we see uh, Roald uh, doing uh, what Elves does, namely uh, filling the board with a couple of creatures. Uh, Elf Visionary drawing card, uh, Heritage Druid, tapping for more mana, playing another Heritage Druid. Um, and we've already seen an explosive start. Let's see if uh, Bastein has anything he can do against this. Not sure. Maybe hoping Spirit of the Labyrinth is actually pretty good. Um, prevents elves from doing their glimpse of nature, sick combo turns, uh, and also the uh, um, bouncing elf is visionary with a wire wood. Well, here comes a natural order, sacrificing elf is visionary. Maybe he can look up for another elf is visionary to get even more card draw. Either that. Or I think it's a huge greater hoof behemoth. We'll see. Is it, is it a visionary? No, it was a crater hoof. With Stein scoops, and that was game one. Um, turn three kill for elves. Uh, they can do that pretty consistently, but still, it's pretty good. And Death in Texas, especially on the draw, doesn't have uh, that much they can do against this. But um, we'll see after boarding what they can do. I'll pause the recording for a bit and. You know what I can do? I don't even know how to pass this. I'm just gonna... You'll see my mouse here. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and look up game number two. Should be somewhere around... There. Perfect. Roald putting two cards on the bottom. Mulligan to five, it seems, and... Bastijn already having mulligans to 6, so another mull for Bastijn. But a double mull for Roll to make up for it. <laughs> Wind swept he... Of course not for Dried Arbor, but for a forest probably. And the green sun is in it for the Dried Arbor. Nice turn, one ramp. Here we've got the Stoneforge Mystic, this is pretty good. If you can find the Jitter and get it online. Um, just one hit is just so powerful here. As we can see, this is not a Umusaurus Jitter. I repeat, this is not a Umusaurus Jitter. It's a better skull. Um, yeah, 
let's see uh, what the bed skull does. Um, I don't think it's the correct choice, but you know, who am I to say such things? Meanwhile, Roald taking his turn too, playing one Wirewood Symbiote, one Alasaur Shepherd. Um, Alasaur Shepherd being a relatively uh, new addition. Let me look it up, it's from Jumpstart, yeah. So it's a 1 green, 1-1, one one, uh, especially good against blue decks since it can't be countered and green spells you control can't be countered. Um, in this matchup the uh, other uh, useful ability is for 6 mana until end of turn. Each elf creature you control has base power and toughness 5 and 5 and becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other creature types, basically creating your own Jurassic Park. And we all now know how uh, bad that can go. Um, this is from Bastein's side on his turn 3, one powder keg. So in each upkeep you may choose to put a counter on it, um, or you don't, or you do, it's up to you. And you can tap it and blow it up, so to speak, uh, and destroy every artifact and creature I think of that uh, amount of counters on it. So with probably one counter against elves on it, you can just blow up everything with CMC 1. <coughs> For uh, those of you who, who were really wondering what the type of counter is, it's, it's uh, actually a fuse counter, I just found out. So we got the uh, Wirewood Symbiote and Elvis Visionary combination. Of course a very good uh, synergy there where you can bounce the Elvis Visionary, replay it, draw more cards, bounce it again, etc. Uh, Bastien wisely going for the Wirewood Symbiote here uh, to prevent shenanigans like, like I just said, the Elvis Visionary bounce, but also um, just any value for example against removal if you target an elf and the uh, wirewood symbiote so they can just bounce the elf so wirewood symbiote oftentimes one of the first things you want off the board um, we're wasting the i think that's a savannah not too sure about that uh we all know that gaia's cradle is one of the best uh, lands in the elf deck um, on the other hand, the white mana is usually used for, I think, Arkham of Valor. Maybe they, they play extra white remove from the sideboard in Elves, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> here comes another Wirewood Symbiote. And here comes the Battle Skull. You see, I really would love it if that was a Jitter. But it seems the robot has a reaction. Could be with the bio, yeah, could be an assassin's trophy. So it wouldn't have mattered if it was a jitter or a bat skull. Let's see if it is. Yep, assassin's trophy on the bat skull. Basically, ramping Bastein here in exchange for the bat skull. I think that's probably a good deal although like even the better skull doesn't has a lot of trouble with uh, the wirewood symbiote like you block with elf visionary bounce the elf visionary bat skull does no damage gains you no life so it has basically the same problems as jitter except one if it does connect jitter is so much better so if you're listening this time please go for the jitter next time uh, one other thing uh, to mention here is, uh, you might see the camera is a bit tilted. Um, well, that's the fault of Bastein, the guy on the right. When he sat down, he actually uh, kicked the stand where the, the video camera is uh, attached to. So thank you Bastein. Please do it again next time. Very helpful. Thank you very much. Let's see where we are. We got four mana from Bastein. I see a sword, fl uh, flick a wisp. Ooh, Flick Wisp, the Stoneforge Mystic. That might be an ID. Get that Jitter, after all. Or we... 
Recruits of the Guard, yeah. Just go for Freud. Doesn't l seem like Roald has a uh, like combo we turn or anything. Let's see what uh, Bastein is going to look up with his uh, Recruiter of the Guard. Um, of course you can search uh, your library for a creature with toughness 2 or less, reveal it, put it into your hand. Ah, the Skyclave Apparition. Just good general removal, it's cool. With uh, the Powder Keg on 1, uh, the Wildwood Symbiot actually is pretty good because it can bounce just uh, one mana creature. Um, and replay it next turn. Taking care of the uh, Wirewood Symbiote of course, but still you might want to get more out of your Powder Keg. Here we see a Grist. Uh, also one of the newer additions. The Grist the Hunger Tide. Casts one green, one black and one colorless from Modern Horizons 2. Uh, the funny thing about Grist is that as long as it's uh, not on the battlefield, it's also a creature. Uh, meaning, you can green sun zenith for it. Uh, it's pretty versatile. Uh, at a minus two, you can destroy a creature or planeswalker, having to sacrifice one of your own creatures. Uh, but that's n usually not a problem for elves. Uh, and the plus one, of course, creating a black and green insect creature token, as you can see. Uh, and you mill a card if that card is an insect. Um, you can put another loyalty counter on Grist and continue this process. If I'm not mistaken, the only insect in elves is the Wirewood Symbiote. Of course, the, they only play one Grist, so... And here comes the Skyclave, taking care of the Grist, yeah. It's just the incremental value Grist can uh, provide us. It's a good thing uh, Basinus uh, can take care of it this quickly. Mm, one mana open. We know Bastein still has a flick wisp. Ooh, look at that Stoneforge. Getting in there. Not afraid of uh, insects nor dinosaurish elves. Of course, Roald would have to double block and taking care of either the Visionary or the Shepherd's pretty good. Here we see an Abrupt Decay, taking care of the Apparition, making a 3-3 Illusion on Roald's side. Now Bastein's board's getting smaller and smaller, and Roald's slowly adding to his. But we do know Bastein sells the Flick Wisp, I very much like that card. Here's the Heritage Druid. Let's see if uh, maybe Roald can get to the point where he can activate the second ability or the ability of Alasaur Shepard. Make everything a huge dinosaur. Make all the elves a huge dinosaur. Um, but having to tap elves, nah, I probably just need a ga guy's cradle for that. Alright, let's see what Bastein does. Flicker Wisp, get a Jitter. Flicker the Stoneforge Mystic, get a Jitter. Get a recruiter, sure, yeah. Just uh, more value, getting more creatures on his side seems good. Right here, a mother of runes actually seems reasonable because it looks like a um, until Roald combos off, it looks like a uh, matchup where it's mostly just combat based. He's getting more a skycliff apparition from these, so Bastein more or less going for the. Uh, Clearing a couple of creatures and maybe win through combat. Though Bastein, if you're listening to this, get get a jitter next time. Don't know if if I've said this before, but illusion coming in. Oh, you know what I'm forgetting? I'm forgetting to keep track of the life total, let's see if I can do that. Bastein is at 16 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, Roald at 18. Let's see if I can uh, remember to uh, do this each time. Mm. Alright, 
So what I see in Mustaine Hand is a, I think it was another Russian port, uh, for sure another uh, Skyclave apparition. Yep, coming down, taking care of the. What do you want to do with it? Maybe the Heritage Druid, since he doesn't have a lot of quick mana production. Could be the Shepherd. Yeah, the Heritage Druid. I think I agree with that. Though, I'm both not a uh, Death and Text player, nor am I an Elves player. So, As always, like uh, Robbie usually says, if you see anything I missed, or uh, you want to tell me I'm a, I'm a dumbass, that's fine too. Just to leave a comment in the uh, comment section. And I'm not even sure if uh, Robbie usually sa says this, but I see other YouTube people saying this. So here goes. Uh, please like. Uh, what's the other thing? Comment. I, I already said that. And, um, and subscribe. So, am I doing a good job promoting here, Robbie? If you think I am, Robbie, please leave a, a comment. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Alright, there goes the Kryrian Ranger. Of course, uh, bouncing a forest, untapping elves. So it's kind of like an incremental advantage building up on the side of death and taxes. Um, that's one way you can go. Um, another thought that just occurred to me um, for next time, uh, Bastain, I uh, might have said this before, I'm not too sure. But more aggressively go for the Jitter, just, I don't know. But this is still, uh, at this point, looking good for Death and Texas. Having a uh, more creatures on the board, having a Flyer, Flicker Wisp. Flyers, of course, being one of the weaknesses of Elves. Uh, and we see it coming in again. Um, ooh. I have, of course, missed some life totals. But Roald going down to 9, it seems. I'm sorry. Still practicing, learning how to how this goes. But stand still at 16. Two Russian ports, one in the upkeep. Tapping, yeah, and the other one in the draw step, probably. Yeah, in the draw step. Tapping the I hope try it over. Seems like he's going for the forest. So in the yeah, exactly. The second activation in the draw step. Very good. Um, though I would have liked to see him tap the dried hour. Minimal thing, but. Uh, sword splashes. That's good. We're still uh, just beating with Flicker Wisp, I guess. Imagine being a, a tiny elf and seeing this. Uh, Weird creature just flying above you, trying to jump, grab it with your little small elf's arms, not being able to reach up there. Must be uh, frustrating, I think. Yeah, tap, draw. Let's see if he goes for the dry drop this time. He taps the forest. Why would Symbiot? The, the thing is that Roald can still just, I don't know, um, like draw a natural order and just win on the spot, I think. I haven't counted, but <laughs> is that a, uh, is that a, yeah it is. It's a Graph Digger's Cage. So Roald can not in fact just draw a natural order and win on the spot, but he still has the, uh, um, I think he still has one abrupt decay on hand, so... Roald at 6, probably the Flick Wisp coming in, putting him into 3. I think. So I'm looking at Roald's dice, die, and not a lot is happening there, let's see. I think he's at 3, right? I'm not sure, let's see. No, so yeah, he was at three. Uh, didn't he? Had he threw the progenitors. Very, very good, Roald. Very good, like like a true pro. Um, 
So he was at three. Then uh, of course next turn uh, he didn't have an answer for the flicker wisp. So he didn't have an abrupt decay, I guess then. Um, and the flicker wisp uh, kicking him to zero life. All right, let's see. Set them both to twenty life again. And we're waiting for a uh, game three. Let me just do it like this. I don't have all these uh, fancy know-hows about them technical things that Robbie has. So let's just do it like this. Um, game three. Elves and death and taxes. Uh, not too sure actually what they bought. So let's, uh, of course we saw the uh, abrupt decay and the um, Assets Trophy from Rebel Side in game two. Assets Trophy taking out a better skull. We saw the Powder Keg from Bastein. So we know they boarded that. But both of these decks can play different kinds of uh, uh, of sideboard cards. Uh, let's see, we've got a turn one Metal Sentinel, a turn one Ether Vial. Rolled going in for two damage. Putting Bastein to 18. From a Mice Cradle, he plays another Nettle Sentinel, untapping the first. Guy's Cradle. All the Cradles. I think this deck almost has more Cradles than Elves these days. But Alright, here we go. Combo, combo time. Heritage Druid, of course. Uh, making the Nettle Sentinel tap for mana. Nettle Sentinels untap whenever you cast a green spell, and here it is a turn two natural order. I'll uh, we're staying still at 18, but a progenitus. It's a uh, protection from everything 10 10. Well, see what Bastang can do. <laughs> turn two natural order, of course. Uh, what else does so? If you don't have an answer for that, it's uh ah. So what Bastein is saying here, <laughs> he uh, did have the turn one answer, the graph digger's cage. But um, if I understand correctly, he thought, ah, what's the worst that can happen if I play an ether file first? Well, live and learn, Bastein. Live and learn. Here's the worst that can happen: a turn to natural order, um, meaning. Um, Roald won this game 2 over 1, and as you can see, I also forgot. Let's do it right now. I also forgot to update this one. Done. Alright, Roald winning 2 to 1. Congratulations. Um, and uh, I will see you for uh, round 2, I guess. Bye bye bye.